Hello everyone and welcome back. We've seen probability density functions for continuous random variables, and now we're going to introduce its younger brother, or older brother, or cousin. You know, a family analogy really wasn't the best way to go here. In any case, I'm talking about the CDF, or the cumulative distribution function. So firstly, we're going to look at what that actually is, and then we'll see why it's useful. For example, finding quantiles and the medians, spoiler alert. After that, we'll wrap it all up. So let's get cracking. Okay, so let's say we have some continuous random variable x, and it has this PDF. We know we can look at the probability that x is less than a particular value. Let's call it little x. That's just this area to the left of that point. This is sometimes called the cumulative probability that big x is less than little x. What a cumulative distribution function, or CDF, does is that it tracks this cumulative probability and sees how it accumulates as we increase x. Basically, what is the probability that our random variable x is less than a particular value, and how does that change as we increase that particular value? There are a few really important properties of this CDF. Firstly, the cumulative density function starts at a value of 0 for the smallest possible value of our random variable x. The probability of our random variable being less than its smallest possible value is of course 0. Alternatively, the cumulative density function has a maximum value of 1, because remember, it's telling us this cumulative area under the PDF as x changes, and since the total area under the PDF is 1, the cumulative density function has to be in this range. In fact, it hits 1 at the largest possible value of x, since it is certain that x will be less than its largest possible value. Makes sense when you think about it. Additionally, the CDF is always increasing, as we increase the value of little x that big x has to be less than. This is because the PDF is always positive, so as we move this x line across, we're always going to be increasing the area under the curve, without taking any away. Speaking less mathematically, if we allow our variable to take more values, it's more likely it's going to be one of them. So what this means is that the CDF is a graph that starts at 0 for the smallest possible value of x, moves upwards, and finishes at a value of 1 for the largest possible value of x. There are some more technical features, but they're not important for you at the moment. So let's see how we formally write this out. Let's say we have a continuous random variable x that is defined on the interval a, b, so it can only take values including and between these points. Then, the CDF we write as capital F of x, and that's the probability that big x is less than little x, it's the area under our PDF between the lower boundary of our interval, a, and some point x. In this case, the lower boundary is a because our random variable cannot be less than a. And here we can see why I tried to make that awful family analogy at the start. We can see the CDF actually depends on the PDF. In fact, the PDF is actually the derivative of the CDF, with the PDF telling you the rate that the cumulative probability changes in a particular interval. A higher PDF means the cumulative probability changes quickly. As I said, that's not really important, I just thought you'd like to know. So let's actually see an example of a cumulative distribution function. Let's say that x is a uniform 0, 3 random variable, so x is equally likely to take any continuous value between 0 and 3. Now a uniform 0, 3 random variable has this PDF. So what is the CDF? Let's focus in on this rectangular area, so between 0 and 3. The CDF is the area under the PDF between 0 and x as x moves to the right. So basically, it's the integral from 0 to x of our PDF. And we know in this case the PDF is 1 over 3. So the integration is pretty easy to do, as we can see, it's x over 3. So the CDF between 0 and 3 is given by x over 3. In other words, stick in a value of x between 0 and 3 to x over 3, and that'll tell you the probability that our random variable is less than that value. Pretty cool if I may say so myself. Now before we go off to celebrate because we finished a really hard question, we're not actually done yet. There's just a little technicality left to deal with. What about when x is less than 0 or greater than 3? I know our random variable is never actually allowed to take those values, but it's important to be holistic about the way that we talk about these things. We all know maths teachers love being sticklers for the details, and if you want to do well on the exam, you need to be too. So, when x is less than 0, the area under the PDF to the left is, well, 0, because the curve itself is 0. So this means the cumulative density function in this region is 0. 
So since the area under the PDF to the left of 3 is 1, the CDF to the right of 3 is also 1. So the full CDF is 0 when x is less than 0, x over 3 when x is between 0 and 3, that's the bit we found before, and 1 when x is greater than 3, which we can plot like this. Now of course, for different PDFs there'll be different CDFs, but that's the main process you'll need to follow if you ever need to find one. Normal random variables have PDFs that look like this, with high probability densities in the middle. And that'll result in a big increase in the cumulative probability in the middle as well. So that's the CDF. It's the area under the PDF up to a certain point. So it tells you how much probability you've accumulated at that point. Or rather, the probability that the random variable is less than that value. Okay, so with that, now seems like a pretty good place to take a break. So get up, have a stretch, and when you come back, we'll get straight back into it. See you then!